guys. Welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome. And welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. I'm actually just going to go into a little flow. I just did a video with um, just some things I had been seeing in regards to visions and shapes and um, references to hydrogen and um it's just a little rant if you guys are interested in watching that it's a little bit of an energy update as well and uh from there i just wanted just to go into a little play on words so when i play with words it to me it's bringing together different pieces of information in a an order um that isn't necessarily linear and it holds within it codes and when i think of a code that is a representation in a format that can represent something else so letters hold within them a vibration and when we combine those letters together they create a geometric equation um and that's a play on words even as well it gives us the ability to equate or to um give meaning to and think of what does meaning mean? Where did that come from? The golden mean, a um, certain measurement, a certain value that we then assign to the geometry of letter con conformity, so to speak, the form of the letters that we give the words that give value to our expression in the form of communication. And so I'm just already in flow. So I just kind of go with this. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome. Welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light, if I didn't already say that before. And sometimes I repeat myself. I'm being shown concentric circles and repeating patterns. So let's play with that a little bit, shall we? Sometimes we'll have repeating patterns come up into our awareness. Sometimes I'll be called to say the same word over and over and over again. And then take that word and look at the word association that I have attached with the symbol that that word provides. And if I break that down a little bit, the symbol that that word provides. So for example, the word apple to me represents so many different things. And I'm being called to share this because part of what I feel that I have I came here to do or express is just to share the different ways that we may not be aware that we are able to communicate and that our guidance team our guidance so many times I have people that say I'd love to talk to my spirit guides or what do my guides have to share with me and what do my guides look like and where are they from and and all of this and I connect into an alphabet an alphabet and a lot of the ways in which I share these videos that's connecting into all kinds of different signatures, a signature, a sign, a sign, a sign wave. Think about a stop sign. What does that represent to us? It has is a hexagon. It's that hexagon shape that holds a geometry. It's a color red. That's a spectrometry that's on a wavelength that gives us certain recognition with what that color feels like to us. That shape feels like to us. It, the letters S T O P, right? Where did the um, word etymology come from? What does the letter S represent? How many letters is it? S T O P, four letters. They hold a geometry, they hold a configuration. Uh, four has to do with matter, it has to do with. So I'm just in flow about this because it's my passion. <laughs> um, so, squirrel. <laughs> I just got off on a tangent there. So let me read it back in a little bit. So repeating patterns. Many of us are recognizing repeating patterns in our, in our habits. Many of us are recognizing repeating patterns in words and things that we tell ourselves. Um, many of us are recognizing thought patterns, like hearing that thought over and over again. Where did that come from? Is it my thought? Why am I having that thought? Let's change that. Let's become aware of it so we can either integrate it, utilize it, or get rid of it, dissolve it. Um, uh, also with pattern recognition, the word, so apple, I'm gonna go back to apple. Apple has so many different meanings. Yes, it's a fruit, right? It's a often associated with the color red, but there's other colors. There's the golden apple, there's the green apple. So there's many different 
forms of fruit. And if I just associate it with the word apple, that brings me into the vitamins and the nutrients that are in apple and how it's good for my body, which if I think about that, I also think of the apple flavor. And then I think of pie. So apple in itself is such a perfect word. So if I go into the word pie, that makes me think of geometry. That makes me think of a circle. It makes me think of pieces. It makes me think of deliciousness. And then that might remind me of when my grandma used to bake apple pie. And that might make me think of Christmas or Thanksgiving. And that's a whole other uh, subset or tunnel. And I'm being called to really focus on this for just a moment. Okay, let's keep going. So apple, I also think of um, apples to apples. That's a game you can play with word association. That's a good tool to use as well, which makes me think of memories associated with playing that game and who I've played it with and how much fun we've had. Apple also makes me think of um, Adam and Eve. I'm sure some of, somebody out there's already thought of this. And that makes me think of, let's say the Bible or the beginning or at, or atom, which makes me think of atoms and molecules. This is just how I work, you guys. And then I think of Eve, the beginning and the end, the beginning of Eve or the evening, which is signaling the twilight hours. Okay, this makes me think of the toroidal field because an apple has a shape and it's the same as the magnetic field around the earth, or I think that's the Van Allen belt. So that then makes me think of the toroidal field or the shape around the heart, which makes me think of the apple of my eye, the third eye, the pineal gland, the connection to I see, the connection to the seeds that are held within the apple tree, the back to the garden of uh, the knowledge of good and evil, moving back into the atom and the beginning of the seeds that are grown from the heart, the heart seeds that seeds our consciousness that brings me into the spiral back into the toroidal field or that magnified field back to pi and phi and the golden ratio the apple of one's eye the sparkle in the eye see where i'm going with this <laughs> just all of this just came from one word now if i go into that just for a moment which i'm being called to do you guys ever looked up the etymology of apple? This is really fun. You guys want to nerd out with me just for a minute and then I'll go into flow, which I'm already in flow, but let's play for a moment because I think this is really relevant to what I keep being shown over and over again right now with what I do. A lot of other people are going to start tuning into this, not necessarily my videos, but this. What is this? Okay, so I'm just going to pause for a moment. And I'm sharing screen. So I'm on Google right now. And if I just go into Apple, Apple etymology, we're going to go into um, fruit. Well, fruit can also mean a lot of things. Fruit in a ball. Hmm, that's kind of fun. If we look here, I love this. Rose, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Roses, Rosa Che, Rosa Cia. So interestingly enough, it comes from rose, flowering plant, Rosa. So that's the genius. Now, I love this because that has one, two, three, four, five flower petals on it, right? So it's got five petals. And this can take us into many different um, bubbles or what I like to refer to as subsets. Now, the forbidden fruit, etymology of apple. The term comes from an Iberian, this is um, altalong.com. This sounds like a website I might like. There's a whole story where it comes from of the Iberian pronunciation of the Latin word, which has to do with a sweet smelling golden apple. I'm not even going to go there. Um, I mean, it's just fun. I like it. So it, it's a lot of things like it probably came from this. It might have come from that. Uh, oh, I didn't even go into that subset of Apple computers. I'm sure somebody's already thought about that. So if we go into Apple computer, right? Um, we could think of the Apple, the big Apple in New York. Like there's so many different subsets or bubbles or layers just to that one word. And think about the infinite number 
of words that we've created through the uh, what letters of our alphabet. And our alphabet doesn't even contain as many letters as alphabets from other places and spaces. In addition to that, that means that many of the words that other languages have, we don't even have in our vocabulary. But what I've been shown over and over again is our vocabulary is based on the um, universal vocabulary. And that's why language in itself and linguistics is growing. We aren't being, I'm being called to remind everybody that we've been very rigid in our belief systems, in our structure. And we needed that in order to establish some sort of foundation. And one might say, well, that there needed to be a truth. But as we begin to know and understand more about the truth of who we are, we begin to expand what the baseline or the foundation of that truth really means. Means the um, value, the expansion of that wave, of that vision. We then be begin to become able We then begin to become, I do that a lot because that's even a play of words. Like, hmm, wow, okay. And then when I heard Abel, I heard Cain and Abel. So we went from Adam and Eve, the apple, into Cain and Abel, which was the next branch of the tree, we could say, right? So that branches us out into, oh, well, then there's this story and there's this story. Now, it did originate from the root, but the apple originated from a seed, that originated from, right? So which came first, the apple or the seed? I mean, we could go into so many different plays here, but it is an idea or a concept that I am here to just invite everyone to play with and recognize that as our knowledge expands of our reality, so too does our truth. And as we begin to access these deeper folds within our brain, these deeper folds within our um, the gray matter, these um, pieces or of the alphabet or junk DNA, as we begin to reconfigure and regroup and um, create from that space, we then begin to alphabetize a different order of things. So that's all a play in words. We begin to alphabetize in a different order and we begin to transcribe things that we didn't understand before. It's like having, I'm being shown a script or a scroll that we were unable to read because the symbology was foreign to us. And essentially, as we begin to unravel our ribbon DNA, as we begin to unfold the folds in the brain, as we begin to flower and open, we begin to see the information that was stored within that petal, within that ribbon, within that thread of information, within that weave, that shape, that geometry, that symbol. And we begin to then tune into more information. We begin to find things about ourselves, including perhaps lost language. And over time, this becomes more and more available to us. And this brings us into an acute accuracy. And this is the plan words. I keep being shown um, a map maker, and I can't remember what they use to make maps. Um, it's that Acura symbol, right? I can't think of it. Anyways, I'm sure you guys know. So I'm showing, being shown accuracy acuity, and this has to do with, I think, a video that I did or a writing that I did recently, accurately and acuity open up to our own IQity. So our own inner IQ then becomes a codex of information that essentially we begin to communicate from that fluidity. And I'm being shown a box or a graph that all has rounded edges. 
So I was also shown that our grid system, the, the grid, the new earth grid, if we could think of it as more of less of a square or a cubic, um, because when I say cubic, it brings to mind the symbol of a cube, but picture it more like the flower of life, which is uh, essentially, if you put have hard edges on it, it comes from a cube, a cubic measurement, but there's edges all around it that are rounded, and it brings it more into a um, a different radius, a different radiance, a different geometry, a geometric ability to soften and be more fluid from one perspective. So that was one flow. I'm going to go into a different flow. Or maybe I should stay with that. I'm not really sure. Let's play with this a little bit. We begin to open our configurations. We begin to open our geometric equivalations, our equations into a higher equivalent. We begin to substantiate certain formats that were once unsubstantiated or insubstantiated, that were once held within a sequential linear, sequential uh, synchronization in time. And as we play with these bits and we begin to uh, string theory, if you will, we begin to reverberate, we begin to um, co-mingle, we begin to, I don't know the quote on this, but coalesce, it's from um, that silly movie. I'll come back to that later. We begin to hum, we begin to, I'm seeing the strings in a harp, we begin to play a different subset. We begin to open and economize, economize. We begin to come into and hear the echoes of resilience, the waves coming out of the void that are now tuned into our sound our resonance, our sound. We begin to harmonize and allow ourselves to listen, to open. And this is merely scraping the surface. We are then able to extrapolate and pull from this deeper void, if you will, that perhaps some have been avoiding. Some have been dancing around, if you will, for the sound was incomprehensible. Yet now we are able to apprehend, to hang on to, appraise, and applaud the sound that we are recognizing is coming from deep within. I'm seeing this inside of Earth. I'm hearing a hollow, like, boom a seismic boom. I'm seeing boom as a boomerang. I'm seeing boom as spelled backwards as mood. I'm seeing um, us just dancing. And I keep seeing um, the alphabet on the ribbons of DNA reorganizing and dancing around in a different molecular extrapolation. This is a play on words. We begin to extrapolate. We begin to play with the different spins, the plates, if you will. We begin to feed into the harmonization that our plates are holding, our platelets, if you will, that which we are plating. So it's like when you plate food in its nutrition, Ooh, and I'm seeing this as a play on words with neutrinos and nutrients and this um, spinography and spindles, and it's all kind of reworking itself. Even the way that we play with language begins to become a dance. It begins to become a fluid momentum that we can swing into motion and I'm seeing a pendulum swinging back and forth in like this chaotic 
and then moving into this beautiful um, flower. We then begin to activate the deeper human potential of communication with more than what we see. For we have been invited to play with the geometry of the landscape of our reality. And what does that landscape encompass? What does it hold within it? It holds the very uh, fabric that you are existing within. It holds the very fabrication of the imagination for thoughts are things, if you will. Thoughts are strings or are stringing together the fabric of our awareness of togetherness of our expression in this togetherness that we are all expressing together within this fabric of existence. For we are all existing within a molecular structure that is bound through certain molecular bonds that are now shifting and stringing up, if you will, stirring up, if you will, are moving around and bringing up a fluidity of language confirmation. So really quickly, the language confirmation has to do with communication, molecular bonding, high, high, you know, H2O, hydrogen with water, and the number two is a chemical combination, a mathematical combination, a geometric configuration that then presents itself as water. Yet this is held within our body and it is constantly shifting and reforming, even though those bonds are the base, the way that those bonds form and the vibrational frequency that they hold as they bond together change. Therefore, the truth about what those bonds represent and how they look also changes. Therefore, the truth about that foundation and base of our uh, reality also shifts and changes and morphs, even though it's still H2O. But it's more than that. It's a little light language here. The angles in which we connect, in which we molecularly intersect from one play with words, allows us to create new reference points, allows us to line up with different referential patterns and referential points of configurations. These configurations within our own vocabulary are allowing us to speak up, are allowing us to move out of this indoctrination that many of us have been bound to from one perspective. It allows us, so as I say that, you guys, indoctrination sparks a certain vibration that we attach to that word. But when I hear indoctrination, not only do I see a book or an agreement or something that we have learned that we then created as our reality, I hear indoctrination. I see us, us docking into three different um, particles or shapes, and I keep seeing right triangles. So I'm seeing all of these right triangles that are intersecting and coming together. And it reminds me of, I'm being shown as I say this, a recent, ooh, what are they called? Um, those things that come up from the earth. A recent, um, hold on, I have to look it up. My brain just went squirrel, I, cause I'm hearing more about what they are. So I'll share that in just a moment. Okay, as soon as I hit pause, it came to me, crop circle. So the most recent crop circle had all of these, there were two of them and it shifted. And it was like these, I'm see, I saw these right triangles all intersecting together like a wheel. And so I'm being shown this as above, so below, as within, so without. So the earth is even expressing this up 
And it's in communication in response to us. So there's a lot with that. This creates an activation within the discs. And let us play with this for a moment. These, okay, so I wrote something recently called disc joke joy key, or maybe not recently, I don't remember time, but disc joy key, disc jockey. And I'm seeing the discs in the spine that hold, um, oh, <laughs> the cerebral spinal fluid is like, opening up, playing a song, it's playing a sound, it's playing a tune, it's playing a vibration, it's playing a chord. And then I'm hearing spinal cord. <laughs> I'm seeing reference to spinal tap, which is funny. It's supposed to be funny. Let's lighten up and make fun of. <laughs> and I'm hearing our volume goes to a, an 11, not just a 10, it's an 11 and better spoken spoken it's a 12 and it's higher than that it's not there's no limitation um in this particular communication um my husband introduced me to that movie i never would have watched it if it hadn't been for him and i was like i don't want to watch this movie and now i refer to it all the time <laughs> he doesn't quite understand that about never any story but you know um and even light language in itself holds a tune and a frequency that many, when they tune in, are confused, yet others are renewed and others are, uh, I'm just seeing question marks come up, which causes them to go deeper, to look deeper, to go further if they choose to. And we are all making a choice. We are all making a choice as we tune in to what it is that we are tuning into. So we have already made certain choices or we could call them agreements that we have signed, that we have signed on to at birth, if you will. Yet, if we are being rebirthed in this very now moment, that which it is that we have signed on to or signed up for may also be changing for we are each coming into a, um, a new focal point, a new foyer, if you will, a new for, for, uh, foyer. I'm seeing a uh, foyer, which I always forget what that is, F-O-U-R-R-I-E-R -R -E maybe. And I'm also being shown a foyer, like we're stepping through into this new space and we're looking around saying, which room would I like to go into? And we're actually moving those rooms around as we create more space within our field because of these inbound, okay, play on words, um, abilities, information, activation. So when I say inbound, Things are coming into us from all different variations of ways, through other humans, through um, messages that we might be getting, through plasma in the sun, through different astrological lineups and events, through um, and up from the earth, but also it's inbound. So it's inside of us and things that had been bound up or locked up before are starting to open. And again, I was shown us being inside of, let's say, a ring that has a, that is a tube, but held within this tube. And you could even think of the spinal cord. Oh, I'm being shown the spinal cord if you think of it as a piano. And let's pretend for a moment that each of those bones, your foundation, the skeleton, our skeletor, our skeletor, our um, crystallization of our body, of our body, of our tree, holds a key. And each of those keys communicates up the cord of higher intelligence, of higher cord. We are then able to play 
off of those keys as we communicate and open this new thesis. So this is a play in words. But what I'm seeing is um, this tubular joint configuration activation, we could call it Kundalini, but it's more than that. It then activates this spiral, this these little think of individual cones of information. Um, pine cones kissing, I think Dan Winter calls it. So it's it's negentropy, it's um, coherence that they call it in heart math. It's it's a stabilization of the fluids that are in the process of alchemization. This holds within it a certain conductivity, if you will. And this allows us to conduct inbound uh, framework resiliency. So it's all plan words, but think of the skeleton as a frame. And this, what I'm being shown is um, alphabets again. So again, if you look up DNA proteins and codes, it looks a little bit like when we spell it out, it looks like piano keys, but under like a microscope, I don't even know if that's what they use to look at DNA. It's probably something else, but um, okay, I'm hearing Fourier analytics. So let's play with this just for a moment. Oops. Okay, guys, so I'm in um, Fourier, I don't know how to make that. Uh, Fourier and, and what did I say, analytics? And I think I've brought this up before in other writings, but you guys, I'm in flow when I share this. So I, I don't always retain this knowledge in you know a regular linear format. So I always have to go back and remind myself, oh yeah, what does that mean? Because it can mean different things at different times. So if I go into this Fourier analytics, um, I'm on Wikipedia and it took me instead into Fourier analysis, but I have a feeling the analytics was a play on words. And it took me to math, mathematics and it's talking about amplitude and time. And what I love is it says a bass guitar time signal of open string A note. So this is 55 Hertz. This gives you an idea of what this looks like over time, the amplitude. So that of course takes me back into the heartbeat and this takes me back into coherence. And so if we stay in this nice signal over time, we're essentially making these adjustments and I'm gonna have to come back into flow on this, but um, this is talking about general functions may be represented or approximated by sums of simpler trigonometric, trig uh, trigonometry, but trigonometric, I'm probably mispronouncing trigonometric, but trigonometry functions. So I just want to look at that. Oh, there we go. How funny. Okay, I did not know what that was, but there's the triangles, you guys. Um, I think that's a right angle triangle. So that is a right angle triangle. And I just shared that that's what that most recent, um, crop circle was, and this is what I'm talking about in my own way. So our real functions, which relate an angle to ratios of two-sided lengths, they are widely used. I gotta go into that a little bit different, bit more. But I always think it's important to talk about this because the keywords here are amplitude and time. The keywords here are a note. So I don't play music. Um, I, so I've never trained in music. And I see how valuable knowing about music and harmony is, especially for describing what we're experiencing right now. A note. The other key here is 55 hertz. I brought up somatics, cymatics. So this is... Um, what it looks like in that note or chord. And this brings me back to the spine, this get the, the crystals in our body, the waters in our body are spinal fluid. Um, this has to do with, this is the Fourier transform of bass guitar time signal. So Fourier analysis, that's probably Fourier, reveals the oscillatory components of signals and functions. And here we go, a wave 
function in quantum physics is a mathematical description of the quantum state of an isolated quantum system. We're changing the probability, guys, by how long and how we're able to transform our wave sets. This is quantum, as above, so below, as within, so without. I feel like I need to play with this more, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. Also, what I was being shown, I love this, representing a function, so that was the wave set, right, the quantum wave, as a sum, okay, it's the addition of a sequence, so this goes back to the DNA, and this goes back to what I was talking about before, you guys may not may have seen that video where I talk about jumping DNA, or I'm sorry, jumping genes, I see this as it's an addition of a sequence of any kind of numbers. And that result is their sum total. And I kept getting this message that the numbers are off because we don't know what the sum total is because we're now changing that because everything is changing as our awareness changes, as this has to do with matrices and our grid system and our body. So this reveals the oscillatory components of signals and their functions. Now, um, the wave mechanics, right? And it greatly simplifies the study of heat transfer. Now I've done videos on this before, and this goes back to the messages that I keep getting and I'm in, as I'm in flow is, we are the heat transfer. So I know we've got all this stuff coming up from the sun, but as we oscillate and find our stabilization from our heart brain connection, okay, that allows us essentially to stabilize our body and our relationship with the earth, the animals, the sun, the planets. Therefore, how we exchange information then balances itself out from one perspective and we begin to be in harmony and all that has been all over the place begins to sound off like a tuning fork it doesn't mean we all start to look the same talk the same eat the same sound the same we still maintain our diversity and uniqueness, yet it within that diversity and uniqueness, we create a pattern, a unique expression of what we wear, of our light body. So each of our light bodies holds within it this geometric communication and um, exchange of information. Um, I'm going to go back into flow with that, but I could really go into so many places with that. You guys, this is, I don't have time right now. I have other things I need to do and sessions I need to take care of and, um, you know, living life. I could do this all day long, all the time, most days I want to. So, but. So as we transform, as we come together, I'm being shown, I kind of missed some things on that, that I, um, I was trying to dig up, if you will, but just play with this a little bit. Okay, I'm being shown a cross, a graph, and I'm being shown the wave, and I'm being shown all of these different things. Um, so I drew this in my last video, which I'm still kind of processing, that was hydrogen. <laughs> that was an H-bomb. <laughs> that was an H, um, and not in a bad way. We are the hydrogen boom. Um, we are the boomerangs. But I'm being shown um, just an X plane, explanation, and a different wave. Um, and I've drawn this before. I'm being shown a bow boomerang. So that's what I'm being shown. And that also looks like an eight, right? It's infinite. But again, I talked in my last video, I'm being shown to round off the numbers. I'm being shown to round the edges in order to be more complete. 
And there's a mathematical name for that I found um, synchronistically that I've already forgotten. <laughs> And this allows us to rebound from certain technological applications that have implicitly guided our applications that are amplified during this time because I'm seeing a bow tie. It's almost like um, the old habit is wearing a suit and a bow tie and we're changing out of that conformity and we're creating a different pattern. So I'm seeing like swiggly ties and I'm seeing, so this is all plain words, but I'm being guided to go deeper into this. So essentially we are, um, there has been a, a heavy inclination. So an incline, incline, wrong direction. There's been a, a heavy inclination um, that has been pushing us into a particular set of variation, if you will, which is the opposite of variety. And there have been certain tones and frequencies that have been emitted through the airwaves, if you will, that we have inadvertently, play on words, I'm hearing inadvertently, I'm seeing um, green, vert, and I'm seeing air, and I'm seeing um, latently, latent, um, tied ourselves into or been tied up with. Yet this is also being tuned out for we are out tuning this old orchestration of events that is coming to a culmination, a culminating point that we are moving out of. I'm hearing from culmination to illumination. So we'll play with that a little bit more. So we strike a match, if you will. We now light the fire within in order to counter rotate the spin. This is a play on words. As I say this, I begin to feel into the word rotate. And I'm seeing row, row, row your boat. Life is but a dream. I'm seeing a lot oscillate, rotate, move. Um, so it's like we're constantly countering this, this push, if you will, into a certain region of the mind. For we are now reconstructing the grid. And we have already done this, if you will. So we may bid farewell. <laughs> so long, farewell. We may bid farewell to the old judiciary, play on words, system. For that which we have held as a valuable resource has now been compromised. All of that's a play on words. We now comprise our new sets of resources at a higher state of awareness. And because of this cause and effect, ooh, in effect, these outer lying um, technology driven circumstances. So guys, as I say this, I see the plays on words. I just have to stay in flow with it, but I'm seeing a circus. I'm seeing a circa stance, circumstance, circumvention, that which has been trying to intervene has actually done the opposite. And we have been intravenously intervened with, yet the intravenous, that has to do with vanity and veins, being vain, um, is now, I'm seeing catapulting back on itself. You guys, I gotta have fun with this. I was just being shown the movie, Lord of the Rings. And there's a scene when they have those big rocks that they're catapulting on, what are they called? The orcs, the, I haven't watched that in a while. I'll have to watch that again. And I'm just being shown like, we're in that, that's the stage we're at right now, which can seem like super disheartening and overwhelming and like, there's so many of them and there's so few of us, but it only takes that one big shining light and it's not 
I'm hearing the wizard, but we are the wiser wizards. So we are the ones that are winging, whizzing past. Oh my gosh, there's so many things. I'm being shown like the computer wizard from the old computers, like on my, oh, I don't want to name names here, but um, the old um, computer, not old computer, but you know, where it had the little wizard and you could ask questions to figure out what was going on with your computer. Like I'm just being shown all these different categories to show us that everything is changing. So as we get out of fear and we're able to stabilize this oscillating wave, we are being, we are then able to see the oscillating factors, the factorization of the ones and zeros, the ability to see through the ones that are zero, the ones that are uh, creating this imbalance in the social structure. Yet the social structure and social stature was based on a particular, okay, I'm being shown these cones, um, I'll have to draw that. So let me just pause. Oops. So I drew seven, but I don't even know if that's the right geometry, but that's what it looked like to me. And those are all like cones. And I think maybe there was only six when I drew it before, but maybe it's changed now. And again, that's just a code, that's just a symbol that's attached to a geometry and I should have gotten that right. So let's not be, um, okay, so I'm being called to really play with what I was seeing there. And it had one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, yeah, seven. So I was right. So I was seeing this seven um, with cones there. And then I'm being shown, um, I'll have to draw it again. That's changing, like something about that. It's like they're all coming together, fusing, if you will. And I'm just showing that this vibration is creating this like match frequency set that many of us are, are stepping up to match in our genetics. But it's not just about our genetics. It also has to do with our molecular structure and our own um inner technology. And so we invite you to not fear the old trigonometry that was interlaced and interwoven with repetitive patterns and thought sequencing abduction, plan words, inducing into the body certain triggers, if you will, that then were activated as we were triggered that then brought us to certain keys or tones that then held us within a certain old system of archaeology that we were continuously digging up and repeating and digging up and repeating. This has to do with time loopholes and habit patterns that kept us sending out signals that were I'm hearing infrared, they were red in fray, like infrared, <laughs> they were in fray. So now we're bringing those together, we're softening the edges and we're bringing it back into a complete circle, if you will. And we're sweeping up the dust, we're sweeping up the particles and we're Im emerging or emulsifying, uh, plan words, this new emergence of light quotient a quantifying exhibitor then stands out within the molecular technology that we are investing in. We invite you to play with the ability to play. For the more that you can tune into the harmonics of your own convergence allows you to then emerge from that, bringing us more into a factorization of higher fractalization versus fractionation. For as we move out of the old indoctrination and the old sets that we were docked into, we begin to align ourselves with this fractality that brings us back into community. We begin to find our counterparts, those that spark certain realizations within our own home-based a technology resource. We begin to resource all of the resources that we have at our fingertips, that we have within each other. 
that we have within our own economic opportunity, our own ergonomic, our own, um, this is a play in words. I'm hearing Jason and the ergonauts. So it's like our own fleece, our own fleet, our own. Um, so for me, when I hear the, the fleece or the suit or the wool, I think of that as a light body. So that's our technology. We're not needing to necessarily reach outside of ourselves to have that wizard come help us or to have that technology come in and swoop in to fix everything. Yes, that can be part of it. We can create new instruments of divine design that allow us to stabilize our frequencies such as, um, uh, I'm pausing just for a moment. such as whatever that technology might look like. And I see that as, you know, heart math, right? So I thrive using biofeedback tools, but we're using our own resilience. And that tool just tells us maybe where our vibration is at. And then we make the shift ourselves in order to bring ourselves into alignment. But we can use music as a tool. We can use binarial beats. Um, we can utilize certain tools to help us. And this is not just, I'm seeing uh, technology, like in for, um, what is it, red light therapy and, um, and even plant medicine, which is not technology, but from in theory, it's, it's all connected, right? Um, we can use, you know, like the imploder and uh, water, that's been changed slightly to help increase, you know, plant medicine, just like we utilize vitamins, but we're actually, instead of relying, I'm hearing reliance on these outside sources, we only use them as temporary tools of adjustment. And they allow us to then enhance our inner architecture until we can find a match for that higher frequency. And so these are not meant to be used as crutches, if you will. They are, I'm seeing um, they're meant to be used as a clutch in order to downshift and then move up into, so I'm seeing like if you've ever driven a stick shift, you have to downshift in order to go up the hill. And then you can level out and go into your, is it five? It's been a while since I've driven a stick shift, but um, driven a stick shift, but it's you move up into five, but you have to go down into in order to slow down, in order to readjust, and then to go up that hill. This allows us to move through the distortions that are um, being thrown at us right now. And reminder, this is a temporary distraction for all of this is part of our inner enhancen, enhancing enhance. So I'm seeing so many different things. So ironically, what's being done is actually enhancing our abilities because we are that resilient. And that's pretty cool. It doesn't always feel like that. And if we're not getting the proper nutrients is what I'm hearing, that can be very destabilizing. But as long as we're following our own inner tuition, intuition, and that comes with practice. So I'm hearing practicality in order to find our inner resource. So this isn't necessarily something, it comes natural, it's innate in all of us, but it isn't something that, that everyone is going to necessarily practically find. Like we might need to help each other out. And that's why I, one of the reasons I do these videos is to kind of help provide those resources to help activate an inner knowingness that's already within whoever wants to tune into these videos. Um, so this inner re resourcefulness is going to assist us in stabilizing these inbound frequency frequencies. This uh, um, gives us, gifts us, and gives us the ability to step out of deep stabilizing frequencies 
uh, stepping out of inability into inner ability that then allows us to derail that which has not been realized yet. Okay, time. This has to do with time stuff. So as we move into this ability to realize or to derail certain things that have yet to be realized from a distortionate, improportionate field, we then create the, um, I don't know what I just saw, but it was like, I just saw a wormhole. So I saw this train that's coming like full throttle and I saw us creating a bubble through our heart coherence, through our ability to stabilize our frequencies. And it doesn't take everyone to do this. It takes a good amount. A good amount means a value. It means a whole, uh, uh, like a harp, guitar string, right? So we create this bubble. Here comes this train trying to destabilize us it goes into the bubble and it collapses. I see it just go down this wormhole. And then I'm seeing it kind of come back onto itself, whatever that means. So it's almost like it de it's like whoever's on that train is actually going to go through a warp. And it's ironic because we could play with the word warp, right? I'm hearing warp speed. So there's things that are being created to try to warp our view, warp our realities, to create this right out of attunement, right? This record that we can't quite read, that's in between the lines, that's held within our junk DNA. Um, I'm hearing Jane Fonda, the trunk. Anyways, it's a song. So, um, that train is actually trying to derail from one perspective. And that's irrelevant. Who, why, where, what, how? Because we're creating a bubble and we're like, bring it. And then that bubble creates its own wormhole and it comes back around on itself and eats its own tail from one perspective. So it's almost like this train if you picture it, I, I, I'm being kind of called to just share this and then I'll end on this note. My drawing is hilarious, but so here's our train. It's going through here, right? This is the derailing train. This is us creating this bubble and it's going into the bubble. And this is like, we're creating these different waves that are essentially taking it and moving it back around itself. And so there's the train. It's not a heart though. I don't wanna, well, it's ironic that that was a heart, right? Cause that's what we're doing through heart consistent, right? Through love and light. But this train, let me draw it a little thicker. So there's the train and it's trying to come through and we are essentially creating these waves. We are the sun. And the train comes back in and around itself and it begins to eat itself. And then no more train, it gone. Now that's like super, that's just what I'm being shown. So this is essentially what we're doing. And that essentially then we're creating this. And then what I'm being shown is this becomes this, a spiral rather than, um, and that allows us to stabilize the, a, new, a new reality. I know that looks like squiggles, but it's a concentric circle in waves, my beautiful artwork. So we are being invited to be realistic with our own expect expectations and expectancy of what we are required to hold in the form of responsibility. We are being called to listen to our higher recognition patterns. So we recognize the distortion and we feel the seeds growing from within. And I was called to go back and play with those words of responsibility.
We are being called to listen in and recognize when we are being invited to certain platforms that may be segments of the train that I just drew. So within each of those, um, so this train uh, holds these compartments, box cars, right? And each of these holds a pattern of distortion. So are we gonna write, and this is the, these are the rails on the train and it's going this way. And what I'm being shown is we're being invited to, if we jump on the train, recognize that we can jump off at any time. And by recognizing these compartments or boxes, we could call this, I mean, that could be a box of fear, regret, shame, blame, judgment. But it could also be a representation of like these different layers of our social structure, our political structure, right? We see this particular candidate. Um, I'm hearing candida. This particular candida it. And I'm being, um, and we might then jump on that train and get pulled into this spiral because we're not aware of why it is we're being called to that doesn't mean we don't necessarily look at it or we don't get involved when we're in our higher vibration. But once we jump on that, we can dissolve that and we can dissolve that and we can dissolve that. And then we're dissolving the train as well, but we're not getting pulled into that um, reality where that train is headed. And, and what I said a minute ago had to do with time. Like, um, I don't remember what I said, but let me go back and flow. Oh, like, oh, well, I'm hearing entropy versus neg entropy is so key right now. And essentially, we get out of the loop that somebody else is projecting upon us. And we then be able to, we are then able to coordinate and highlight with a fluid acuity and consistency, the accuracy of our own relevancy. So that's a play on words, the revealing within, the elevation, the revealing of more of, of why we're here and this where, what we came here to do. And just being in that present state of awareness beyond even that of an upholding behold um i'm just seeing this adoration for life adoration for all things living adoration for self adoration for each other and it becomes this charm this beautiful ability to um charm the serpent if you will so that has to do with the kundalini and i'm going to go into a completely different video on that and i'm running out of time so I'm going to end on that note. The word that came through earlier was expectancy. So not necessarily holding on to an expectation of when this is going to happen. Recognize that it has already happened and there may be some discomfort. The birthing may not have uh, actually, we, not, we might not be seeing yet what we've already birthed. But from that perspective of the train and the time, it's already being dissolved. It's already eating itself, essentially. So I'm going to end on that note. I hope you guys found this uh, fun and different, perhaps. Um, and uh, especially if you've just watched and tuned into this for the first time. Thank you so much. I never really say thank you enough. I don't think verbally for the donations that you guys have provided me with over the time that I've done these videos. I am in gratitude for that. It does take me a lot of time to do these videos. Ultimately, though, I love doing them. So that's just an extra thank you. And I'm so grateful for it. It helps me, um, you know, buy supplies, more markers, more books, and more of my time, essentially, right? Uh, from one perspective. From another perspective, I'll be doing this forever, as long as I'm in that space of coherence and in that space of feeling that this is something that I'm called to provide. I wanted to just touch into that briefly because um, 
that can change for all of us. And that's okay too. It might look different. It might sound different. And that's kind of where another, another phase that a lot of people are coming into. So in love and light guys, again, thank you so very much. Namaste.